Welcome to the Manufacturing Masters Podcast with your host, Allison DeFord. As a manufacturer, you are concerned with, talking about, and really living innovation every day. The question is, how do you get your staff involved in innovation? Keep them motivated and excited and part of your endeavor to innovate. Well, over the past decade plus, today's guest has had the opportunity to visit more than 100 manufacturing companies. He has identified three common traits that he's seen in companies where innovation is more than a tagline, but it's something that every single employee believes in. Bill Podnos is the principal at CTSG Strategies, CTSG as in closing the skills gap. He's also business development expert for manufacturing masters and just a really interesting human. He's got a lot to share. We're breaking it down into three key points and... I think the takeaway here is that it's the little things that matter in getting your staff involved in innovation, which in the end will result in a big return on investment. Everybody, here we grow. Well, what a pleasure. We have such a cool topic today. Um, Bill is going to spend some time with us and he is um, a closing the skills gap guy. And I love that because this is such an important um, need in this industry. And because of your experience doing this and for over a decade and visiting more than 100 manufacturers, I think this makes you very experienced in sharing what we're going to talk about today. And it's three patterns that you've identified that I love how you put this <clears throat> in our notes. You've identified companies where innovation is more than a tagline. I think that's brilliant. And it's something that every employee believes in. So I think for everyone listening today, they're going to get a lot out of this um, discussion of how do companies like that who are successful in getting their staff involved in innovation, how do they do it? So I know you have mentioned um, they take time to disclose the big picture. How do they do that, Bill? What does that look like? Well, first, thank you very much, Allison, for having me here. I'm really looking forward to this conversation because I do get to share best practices that I have seen firsthand over the past 10 years of working when I was working with the National Tooling Machining Association and other working with other organizations as well, being able to go inside mostly machine shops, but a lot of different manufacturing facilities. And when you said right off the bat about taking the time to disclose the big picture, you know, making sure that your employees are not working in silos that they understand the big picture, I think is critical. That what they are making, they might be making this little part, this little component, but that might be going into a medical device that's saving lives. That might be going into a drone. That might be going into a Mars rover. There's so many things that manufacturing, everyone that's created across this country, making sure that they understand where they are in the supply <laughs> chain where what the value is of what they're creating and that they need to know you know where it's going and how it's being used that's so important i mean think about <clears throat> how many times you go into a manufacturing operation uh which you and i have both done and i too have seen the difference in in what you're talking about here when somebody's just i don't know maybe they feel like they're just doing their part in the line maybe they're they're making a circuit board and they're just they're very focused and 
when you ask them about their job, <clears throat> I think it feels maybe um, small or smaller sometimes than it really is. Because what you just said, the, what they're working on or what they're creating is really important and going into something that's part of a bigger picture. So yeah, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And, and don't you think that that really stems like from the top down, like a mindset and a culture? Oh, it's definitely that. My favorite story to talk about is going to Cygnus Manufacturing here in Pittsburgh. And I was just talking to them when I was working in, with the Bots IQ program, doing youth engagement and talking to them about as a company, asking them to engage their local high schools and helping them to compete in the program. But they were showing me this booklet of the components they make and where it goes. And they were showing me this one little part and they said, this part goes into defibrillators for children. And to be able to bring the point home to our employees about how important it is of what they're making and what they're doing and that they truly are saving lives. They brought an individual whose life was saved by one of those defibrillators to say to them, thank you because of what you made, what you made, what you, that little part that you, without having that little part fitting perfectly in that defibrillator, I would not be here right now. You don't think that inspires your workforce yes. to hear those stories? Or even I remember hearing from another manufacturer, they were talking about how um, they were at a airport and they saw an individual with his army fatigues on and they started having a conversation and he started saying like, oh, I was in this type of this Humvee, it got hit, we rolled over. And luckily, what was manufactured as Humvee, this part, the safety component saved my life. Well, that manufacturer made part of the components that went into that part. So they both just looked at each other and just had a cry because, oh. you know, here <clears throat> she realized that what my company did and created. And he was like, oh, my God you made your company made something that saved my life that i would not be here at this moment so again you know it's not just about saving lives it's watching you know a shuttle be launched and knowing or a satellite being launched and knowing that your part is on there and that your part was made again made perfectly fit so that that can take off and that can sustain what needs to be up and up in space, or even as we said about the Mars rover, knowing people that make parts for that, you know, just telling your workers that you're not just making this little widget, but what this does and what it's about, that will spark them to be like, I need to make sure that this is perfect. Right. And I'm also going to find ways, maybe we can make it even better. Well, and... <clears throat> Don't you think this is a powerful recruiting tool if if more manufacturers created short videos telling the story? They don't I know a lot of times there's um non-disclosures and they can't they can't necessarily talk about the company that they work with, but to share stories, don't you think this would be a fantastic way? to get young people or maybe somebody who's in between careers and they're looking for a, a new place to go um, to see this and feel like, wow, I'd like to be a part of that. That's important. I mean, 100%. I mean, manufacturers, you know, whether you're doing precision metalworking, whether you're doing stamping, whether you know, you are doing electric, whatever that you're making, even as you said, circuit boards, mm -hmm. those parts go somewhere. They are put into, they're put into something and they are, you know, could be going in automotive. They could be going to aerospace. They could be as we, they could be just, you're stamping out um, 
the mold that's going to be used for a Flintstone vitamin. I mean, there are so many things you potentially could be doing that's all that's all around you. Yes. And showing them that you, yes, we might be looking at making something that just looks really small, you know, and why am I making like a hundred of these? Well, you're making a hundred of these because what, where that's going to go, you know, is going to be something that's important that you're doing something that you are working in aerospace. You are working in a, you know, you can be working, you don't have to work at Lockheed Martin to be in aerospace. Right. Right. Oh, that's you so have, true. You don't have to be at Procter and Gamble to be working on something. You don't have to be at Pfizer working in medical. You can be at Joe's machine shop. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and you are working in all those components and all those fields. And manufacturing is really the only place where you're able to do that, where you can be working in so many different fields. Yes. Oh, I feel like, okay, if I had like pom-poms right now or something, I'd be <laughs> waving them. Um, <clears throat> so true. So true. Well, let's talk about uh, a second pattern that you've identified. Um, it involves consistency in team meetings. So let's talk to our listeners about that for a minute. What does that look like? Well, I think the, the describe it first is at the beginning of each shift, you know, because we know that sometimes there's first, second, third shift, first, second, or maybe you just have the first in the morning is take the time to communicate to everyone in the facility what you want to or what you need to accomplish for that day. What do you need to do? But then, and then I would say, shut up and listen then to your employees as they say, this is how we think that we can accomplish this. Let them lead that conversation of saying, okay, we understand we have to have this done because this is important for our client, or this is important because with the materials that we have or how we have to do scheduling that we have to get this done. Communicate that to them. Don't just say do a hundred pieces. Say what the reason is, why you're doing it, you know, and what the big picture is. You know, we talked about the big picture before, but you have to, you know, do that during those team meetings. And then you have to listen to them when they say, oh, we can do this better. You know, we can change out this tooling and we can do something where we thought it was going to be done in an hour. We can have the, actually this one part done in 30 minutes. I mean, being able to realize, you know, where, you know, learn from them of what they say about what we, how we can do it better. But then also provide them with an opportunity even if they're, if they're not really sure they want to say something during team meeting have a board have something available where they can write those ideas down they might not be comfortable working you know talking in a team environment recognize that and then give them an opportunity to communicate that way or if through email or even through a text whatever it is let them have what's their best way of communicating let them do that because one of my, you know, old bosses used to say, if they don't have, if he doesn't have the information, he's going to make up a story. Oh, so true. Don't, don't let people make up stories. Provide them with all the information. Trust them that they will, you know, don't think we have to have everything as a secret and everything kicked from them. Um, no, trust them with that information. Right. <clears throat> well, yeah, the more, the more they know, the more equipped they are. And I think that that is, that's so important. And one of our experts from the Manufacturing Masters platform, Troy Lenahan from Eden Valley Poultry, we actually did an episode, um, gosh, it's been several months ago now, but if anybody wants more in-depth ideas of how to do this, how to create this board and do it successfully. Watch that episode with Troy. Uh, <clears throat> it They did it and thought it would maybe be up on the wall for a year. And now I think it's three years later. They've had so many innovative ideas that they've adopted, that have saved the company money, that have created revenue streams, and, and also it's a way for the employees to um, give praise 
to other team members. And he said it's especially effective for people that are maybe shy. Like you said, they're afraid to speak up during the team meeting. But um, yes, I love that you brought that up and that you're seeing that because his his episode was really eye-opening for me. And it's one of our most popular, I have to say. So I would um, I would ask you, do you have any suggestions for a starting a board like that or a vehicle where people can give ideas and uh, and or praise anything you've seen well for what i've seen actually um at caterpillar's operations in houston pa mm -hmm. unfortunately they're not there anymore but i remember meeting with the the general manager of that facility and that was actually that board was the proudest thing that he had and that he showed. He went and had this board up there and it was just a regular whiteboard mm -hmm. that was attached to the wall. So nothing fancy. You know, had nothing fancy, <clears throat> but a way for people to be able to put that information up when they had an idea. And he showed me a couple of them, just like you said, is, you know, in the video that Manufacturing Masters has showing where, you know, these were successes. And showing that, you know, this individual who they never heard speak up at a meeting or never talk about went and had an idea. They put it up on the board and it saved, you know, the company, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars just by changing something else. And, you know, giving them that ability, you know, to have it out there. And you said also about the praise. I, I'm not a suggestion box person. Because I just think having a box where someone writes something down, who knows what they're going to do it. And they also don't put, you know, are they going to put their name to it? No. This is an opportunity where it's, it's someone can put their name to their idea, that they're showing innovation. And if I was a boss and I had someone who keeps on coming up with great, you know, or ideas or just throwing ideas out there, shows that they're thinking, shows that they want to improve, shows that there, there is something there. They might not be the right things at the right time, but they could be down the line. And if you just stop and you listen to them and what they have to suggest, and if it's wrong, then explain to them what it is, but do it in a constructive way. And I think that part is as important as, you know, as well. Absolutely. Well, and this segues beautifully into the third um common trait that you've seen and that's recognizing um and rewarding employees for their ideas because as we were talking the word incentivize came to mind how how have you seen manufacturers do this effectively is it always with money or have you seen other things that that are working well? How how are manufacturers that are doing this right? How are they incentivizing and recognizing their employees? Well, the first and foremost is taking that time to acknowledge your employees. Um, I during all my walks around facilities, I've recognized two different you know bosses or managers or owners that take me around and showing me all their different machines and what they have and what's going on. The ones that go and stop and talk to the operator, talk to the machinist, know something about their lives, ask the question, ask about their family. Yes. That's showing an investment. That showing is we are proud of this person that's working for us. They're recognizing them instead of just they're a worker and putting in, you know, putting a part into a machine pressing the button to go and then when it's done taking it out and putting the next one in but they actually recognize that and i see the smiles on the faces of the workers when their boss comes up to them and says hello and asks them about it stops you know in mid-sentence i could be talking to them and they see someone and say hey how are you doing or what's going on they're they're communicating they're talking they feel seen. and how important that, that yeah seen yes. and respected i think and again, as we talked about with a financial reward, yes, I believe that if an employee came up with an idea 
where initially you thought you're going to have 10% profit and they came up with an idea and you now have 40% profit on a component you made, there should be some sort of reward, financial reward. There should be something to say, thank you very much. Your idea helped this company, you know, be able to make X more dollars. You know, here's a bonus. Here's a thank you, you know, to all the people that were involved in that part. I think that that's something that's important to do whether you do it at the end or you do it immediately, but recognizing that component I think is important. But then you also should be recognizing an individual by seeing if they're showing initiative, they're showing leadership skills, then have them serve as a mentor for the next, your yes. next new worker coming Love in. That. Saying mm -hmm. that, you know, try to see, can they convey what they have learned? Can they provide that to someone else? You know, before you make them into a project manager, see if they can transform their transfer their knowledge to someone else, and they're not afraid to do that. You know, there's so many companies that are out there that um, an individual won't provide their institutional knowledge to someone else because they're afraid that they're going to lose their position if they do that. Oh, this young person's going to come in. I'm going to teach everything I know, and they're going to fire me because I'm making more money. Um, I remember a company saying, and this was a very, this was a huge um, defense contractor, and he said that any employee that refuses to help to train someone else, that person will don't have to worry about losing their job, but they don't have, but they'll never move up. They'll stay where they are, and they'll be doing the same thing mm -hmm. over and over again, which is why. You reward those people who do that. Reward them with new responsibilities. Reward them by saying, we want to teach, we want you to learn a new skill and send them to a training course. Allow them, you know, I always say the greatest incentive is let someone go to INTS to see all the, right? or yes. a fab tech or anything. You know, let them walk that shop. Well, then let them walk the exhibit floor to see what's new and exciting out there. You want to get someone engaged. You want to get someone inspired. You want to see someone who looks at the new technology and is like, wow, I can't believe that potentially next week, next year, five years from now, we're going to be doing this. Yes. And they understand it. They see it. And it's just it's having them then also make a recommendation saying, hey, I think we should be able to do this. Um, that is also going to, again, inspire them you know, for that innovation because they'll, they've seen what machines are out there that can maybe help them do what they're doing, you know, faster and eventually with, you know, less cost. I love that idea. And, you know, it's so true. Uh, we had Nicole Walter from HM Manufacturing on the program <clears throat> and she does that with her employees and she took a new an intern <clears throat> for marketing and she invited her to go and this gal was just dumbfounded she's like me you want me to go and she said absolutely she said she it was the best investment that she could have made for this intern she then became uh, an employee uh, just as fast as humanly possible she's committed she's excited she said it just opened up her world to um what she was going to be a part of that this was so big and important and exciting <clears throat> so yeah it, it's as soon as you said that i thought of nicole and um and i know another company <clears throat> that i've worked with they take different employees from different departments and they allow them to go to the trade shows where they're exhibiting. So let's say you're going to be exhibiting at a trade show and you show up with somebody, uh, uh, a supervisor or someone from accounting. Like I'm talking one person from each department every so often gets to go to the trade show and meet potential customers. And the customers have told them, wow, like your company culture is really committed. Like this is a person from accounting, right? Or this is, um, if you're a little bit larger company and you have customer service, this is a customer service person. Like they're blown away. So 
I think that that's really important, whether it's an invite to go walk the floor or maybe an invite to go be part of the show. It's a great investment and it doesn't cost um, a ton of money. So, gosh, we're getting close to the end. I I'm always so sad because there's so much to talk about. So to recap, <clears throat> taking time to disclose the big picture, very important. Two, be consistent with your team meetings. And I love how you said, you say what you're going to say and then shut up and listen, right? Really hand it over and listen to your team. And then three, reward and recognize your employees for their ideas. Is there anything else that you think is important to share with our um, manufacturers who are listening to this? like a bonus or something that maybe I didn't ask or we didn't cover. Well, I think something we did talk about is this, that those little things matter. Yes. It's just that little thing of getting your staff involved in innovation or showing an investment in them is important. I mean, we've talked in our conversations about manufacturing masters and the knowledge that is on the platform and helping individuals learn more about operational excellence, that here's an opportunity where you're able to provide your employees with access to experts from across the country. And you can find from them what they're interested in learning more about, or also where is that pain point where they need to get more training and opportunity. You know, let, let them dictate a little bit of what their interests are. Let them dictate of what they want to learn more about. You know, provide them with those opportunities, just like we talked about IMTS. You can talk about other online training opportunities or going to a class somewhere, or like a manufacturing master's when it comes directly to them and they can watch on their phone during their lunch break. They right. can knock off a couple mm -hmm. of videos and be able to be like, oh, wow, I learned that about supply chain. I really didn't know anything about that. Or... You know, your HR person learns some more on recruiting or just you talked about Nicole and there's Megan. I mean, there's so many great individuals that are out there on the platform where they can learn a little bit more information and a little bit of that, you know, the quick little five minute hit of a video where it puts something in their mind being like, wow, I can't believe this. I can't tell you how many conferences, how many sessions, how many things I've gone to where I might be listening for 15 minutes, but then I'm really concentrated on five. And that, and I get those three take homes in five and that's five minutes. Well, that's what, this is that five minutes. This is your mind's not going to wander. It's going to be straightforward. It's going to be right there. And you get that opportunity for these experts to all come to you, you know, because maybe you're a small company. You can't send everyone to a conference. You can't send right. everyone out there. You can bring it in. But again, it's showing that investment. You're showing that investment in your employees, showing that you care, showing that you understand their needs and potentially their wants. And they're going to, that investment, you're going to get a return that is going to come back to you tenfold. Absolutely. I, it, and it's true. <clears throat> it's like, it's like five minute to seven minute value bombs if you will, um, of just, they're just explosive, full of information. And it's, uh, there's, there's no fluff. I think that's what I've been the biggest fan of, um, about this platform is that it's get to the point, meat, potatoes, and you walk away with knowledge, like you said, that you just consumed during lunch. So it didn't take any extra time out of your day. Um, yeah, I could go on all day. Cause I just, you know, I'm such a fan. <laughs> well, both of us, both of us can do that. We can talk about the, with the data. I mean, I mean, how important it is that to know what your employees are thinking about, to know again, to know where they're looking for training, where they're looking for additional opportunities, what they're, what makes them excited. The insights, um, like that's a second bonus, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> yeah. It's definitely that. And it's interesting when you were mentioning about Nicole Walter. I mean, I remember seeing her at the last IMTS show, having a couple of, couple, you know, young professionals with her walking around, showing her 
you know, showing the floor and showing what's going on. So I've seen that and that how critical that is, is, you know, providing your employees with the opportunity to better themselves, to advance. Everyone always talks about is, you know, oh, I'm worried if, if this individual learns so much, they're going to leave. They're going to earn this certification. They're going to leave. I hear that but all then, the time. But then you always go back to, but what if you don't train them and they stay? <laughs> You know, what happens then? What happens to your company then? So I rather, and what I've seen through companies, I rather take the invest, make the investment and train and help train my employees than and worry if, you know, maybe here and there will leave. But then I want to examine to myself, why did that person leave? What was the reasoning behind it? You know, be able to see that. But I always used to talk about when, and I'm sorry if we're going against time, but um, I actually moved to Pittsburgh from Chicago because I was working for an individual and he invested so much in me. And I was, I just felt so attached and so, you know, appreciative of everything he provided to me. And I had, I knew I had to leave because I, I was going to get more advancements and we needed more money for my family. Um, you know, for those reasons, but I was afraid to leave. So I actually moved to Pittsburgh because the last thing I want to do was go to him and say, I'm going to another company. At least I can say I'm leaving because we're moving. And um, because of that investment he made in me and the growth of me as a professional. Well, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's a culture. I feel like it's truly a culture training somebody and investing in them but also creating a culture and a company where people want to stay. I think that's the other side of that coin. Um, so something for you listening to think about, um, and we hope that you got a lot of value out of this episode. I I can't wait to have you back, Bill. I think that we have so many more things to cover, and I think that your experience and... Um, insights are are truly invaluable so i really appreciated you spending some time with us today well thank you very much this was great i really enjoyed our conversation well cool and and um for you listening you know we want you to know that the work that you do really matters it's really important and we hope that you will keep you know manufacturing out loud because we all need you and we're here to support you. So you also have a choice of how you can spend your time. You could have been listening to or watching a hundred thousand, literally other podcasts today, yeah. and you chose to spend some time with us. So that means a lot. Thank you. And we will keep showing up and bringing value because like I said, we believe in you. So take care. And we'll see you if you're time. not already, subscribe to the Manufacturing Masters podcast on Apple Music or Spotify. And for a deeper dive, head on over to manufacturing-masters.com. It's everything they never taught you in school.